Let's use this notebook. We're going to make a copy first. Connect to the runtime. Matplotlib comes pre-installed with Google Colab. And uh, the convention is to import it as PLT. So Matplotlib has many modules. The main module for plotting is the PyPlot. So we're going to use PyPlot for doing all our plotting. So we say from Matplotlib PyPlot, import it as PLT. It just says you can access all PyPlot functions with the prefix PLT dot. This is a convention, stick to the convention, make your code much more interoperable. If you copy paste code from somewhere, everybody assumes that you are using this convention. We'll create our input and output folders. We learned about the Matplotlib terminology. Let's create a plot. The structure that I like to follow, there are many different ways to kind of create Matplotlib plots. The one I like to follow is first create your figure. So we say plt.subplots, you can create a plot with one row and one column. So this says, give me a figure with one row and one column that is just one axis. And what you get when you run this is your figure object and one axis. You can create one row, two columns, you'll get multiple axis. Right. So you always start your code saying that I want a subplot. You get your figure object, you got access object, and now you can manipulate them. You can also set size. So you say, I want my figure to be five inches by five inches. And finally, when you're done, you want to see it, you can say plt.show. Let's run this cell and you get a plot, an empty plot, just your X axis and Y axis. Let's change it. Let's do two, two. Let's see what you get. You get a plot with four axes. This allows you to just create a figure with any sub subplots inside. You can also, if you want one row, four columns, you can change it like this. Right? Again, it depends on what you want to do. Typically, you, if you just want a single plot, you'll just do one, one, you get one axis and one figure. And that's where you can add stuff to that. Let's put something in it. Let's just print plot one point. You just have one point, you just want to plot that. There's a question. Does it support any other sizes? Set sizes, centimeter or millimeters or anything else or pixels. Maybe I just want an image of 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Only size it supports is inches. If you want centimeters, you just say, I want 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, convert it to inches. If you want pixels, your pixels depend on your screen resolution or DPI, dots per inch. So say, I assume if I want an image with 500 pixels, I will divide it by the DPI of my screen or my output figure that I'm creating and you can get that. Let me just show you the documentation. It's a good question. How do you create figures in different sizes? Inches is default. If you want centimeters, you say one centimeter is 2.54 inches. So now multiply it by that and set it. Again, just converting that. If you want pixels, I want figure of 600 pixels by 600 pixels. Assuming my DPI is 300 or 200, I can multiply it by this. When we save our figure, we have to specify DPI, what DPI you want to save. Higher DPI means more larger image, more high resolution image that we'll create. But again, depending on your use case, you can specify size in different units. Let's run the next cell. We want to plot a point at this coordinate, X coordinate 0.5, Y coordinate 0.5. I just want to display one dot. We're going to go and open up the matplotlib documentation. One of the main skills you have to learn in this class is how to read the documentation, because there are so many options and to customize any plots, you want to go and read the documentation. Here, the documentation says, you can say call dot plot with some arguments and some keyword arguments. These are the two ways to call it. You can call, give some X coordinates, Y coordinates, some formatting option and some keyword arguments. Here, you typically give one or more X coordinates, one or more Y coordinates, and it's going to plot that with the parameters you give as keyword arguments. Let's learn how to do this. So this is a structure. We create a plot, set the size, show it. In between, we're going to add, call this function. In my axis, I want to plot this. First, I want to give the X coordinate. So this is my X coordinate 0 0.5. Y coordinate is 0 0.5. So these are our X and Y arguments. So you can see the documentation says, give me X and Y coordinates. And then you can give some optional keyword arguments. We say, I want the color to be green and marker O. O is the circular marker. Let's run this and see what we get. So we had our marker and we can, you know, display color. You can change the color name. It takes the named colors. It takes 
you know, the hexadecimal color notation, any color that you can give. And there are a bunch of markers that are built in. You can give a list. There are there's a list in the documentation. You can give different markers. If I give star, it'll give you a star marker and so on. So this is a kind of basic plot. Typically, we want to plot multiple things. How do we plot multiple things? Let's say we want to create plot these three points: one point at zero one, zero point one, zero point five, second point, third point. Most of our geospatial coordinates are in this way. X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. We have a list of X, Y coordinates. If you want to display a line or if you want to display a specific set of points, all of our coordinates will be like this. Matplotlib expects our coordinates to be list of X coordinates and list of Y coordinates. So we have to take a list of points like this and say, I want to create a list 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, another list 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then give it. So in Matplotlib, we will typically see code like this, where you can use the Python zip function and say, zip this list of tuples into separate lists. So zip function says, give me this list of points, turn them into two separate lists, X and Y. So you can see this turned into two lists. Uh, X now is all the first values, Y is all the second values. Okay, so if we just have a list of coordinates that you want to plot, you can use zip to turn this into a list. And now we can plot this and say, plot this list of X values, this list of y values and plot that. So we now have this three points. By default, matplotlib says you are trying to plot a line, so it just draw the line. If I don't want the line, I can just say line style none, and it'll just give me the points. We are using matplotlib library from the very kind of at the level. Most of the time, you don't do this. You will have a pandas data frame. In pandas, you say plot. Pandas will do all this conversion for you. You have a geometry, it'll convert into a list of X and list of Y coordinates for you. You don't have to do this. But sometimes you may have to say, oh, I have done this plot. I just want to add these two points to display some labels. And I just know exact coordinates. So then you may have to do some manipulation like this. And most of the time, you don't kind of dive under the hood. But sometimes if you had to, this is how it works in the hood. There's a question. If there are multiple axes, how do we indicate which axis we want to plot? Great question. When you call this with multiple values, so let's say we have two axes and we have a figure, this will be a list of axes. So now when you say I want plot with two axes, this object will be a list of axes. And you can say AX axis of zero, plot this. And then we'll do axis of one, maybe plot them in red color. So now you'll get two plots and you can see you can indicate which axis it went to, which went to the first or second one. If you want to create 100 axis, you can also loop through it. We have a code in one of our notebooks where we plot multiple things using a for loop. And there's a really nice helper function that allows you to do this. We have our figure, we have created it, and we say we are done. I want to save this. This is my first matplotlib plot. I want to save it for memory as a file. How do we save it? There's a function called tavefig which allows you to save your figure. So you can say plt.savefig and you can give some value. And you can see Colab has currently the Gemini integration built in free of cost, even in the free version. So it just auto completes stuff, right? Just kind of helpful for you to say, okay, just, you know, give some path, but you can give some path. So you can just say my image.png, I can save it. When you run this, what you will get is you'll get an image. You can see I got an image.png but this image will be empty, it's a blank image. This is one of the biggest problem when you start learning Matplotlib. It's like, why my image is empty? I did everything right. What happens is when you ask Matplotlib to show the figure, it says, I'm going to display this, and then the plot will get empty. So Matplotlib will display this and say, done, I'm done with the thing. The plot object is now empty. So if you want to save stuff, save it before you show it. Always when you want to save any matplotlib figure, save it first and then show it. If you do it the other way around, you'll get an empty figure. So the correct way to do this would be give a path. So we construct a path to our output folder. So let's say we have a simple.png that we want to save it in output folder. We say plot.savefig in the output path and then show it. So now when I run this, you will get this figure and you will get this simple.png in our output. Let's download it and see if we got it correctly. So this is a simple config that we just created. So we call a PNG file. 
If you want to save it at a specific PNG, this also takes a DPI argument. So save it with 100 DPI. That means 100 pixels per inch. So if your figure size is five inch by five inch, you will get 500 pixel by 500 pixel image. This is how to control the pixel size that you get. So now you get an image which will be a much higher resolution image than before because we specified this as the pixel size. And this will be exactly 500 by 500 pixels. Most of you will not be using the underlying function like this ax.plot, we'll be using higher level libraries, but create a plot with some sub axis, set the size, do your work, save your figure, show the figure. And in between, you can do the stuff that you want. Let's do our first exercise. Vigna, you can explain. So for the exercise here, we want to plot two points with different symbologies. So one point should be a circle, a circle, circular marker with red color. Another should be a triangle with green color. So these are the two points that we want to plot. So in your plot, you can call plot twice and give different symbology to each point. So you can try that. And we have this documentation where you can find... A where you can find different symbols for different uh, shapes or markers. So here you can see this is for circle and this is triangle down marker. So just use these and uh, create two different points with different symbology in the same plot. The key concept here is you can call plot multiple times on the same axis. Plot one thing, plot another thing. You can keep putting stuff on the same axis. So you can kind of overlay multiple plots on the same axis.